Hey, Breakfast Club. We are well into our new series called Faith Training 101, meant to assist you be more effective in helping people move closer to Jesus. Whether you call that discipling, evangelism, sharing, or some other term, Jesus wants to expand his kingdom through you. We absolutely believe that, and it is the reason we are exploring this with you. This is a timely subject because faith training in 2021 is challenging. And today's topic is use your words. Paul writes to the church in Rome, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? For those of you who are parents, I don't know if your children ever went through the phase early in life where they are capable of speaking, uh, but choose not to. One of my boys was especially prone to try to get what he wanted by reaching to what he wanted and grunting. I would often honor his request by getting what he wanted. Why? It was just more efficient than insisting he use words, go through the inevitable power struggle and both of us getting angry. However, over time, this can become not only a bad way to teach your children to get what he or she wants, it can become increasingly difficult to know exactly what they are attempting to communicate with a grunt or a point. We had to start utilizing the phrase that became a mantra in our home. Use your words. <laughs> there is a reason we teach children to speak. Words communicate our thoughts our feelings, our wants with far more precision than a caveman grunt and point. They have to, people can't read our minds. And yet when it comes to our faith, we quite often assume people can read our minds. You hear this expression or something to its effect. People will ask me about my faith because of what I do and how I live. This almost never happens. Yesterday's message was about how our example makes the gospel attractive, but it is not the gospel itself. Nice people are all around. Goodness is not unique to Christians. Atheists, New Agers, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Mormons, and agnostics can all outgood us regularly. Our faith must be spoken. That's Paul's point here. The people you love cannot be faith trained by your example alone. Your example only cuts down distraction to the gospel. Jesus didn't just live a good life. He spoke a lot. If he didn't, we wouldn't be talking about the gospel today. If you want others to follow Jesus, use your words. The gospel message is just that. A message. Messages must be relayed in a way people can understand. Just being a good person is like pointing and grunting. People will have no idea what you are trying to communicate unless you use your words. To quote Paul once again, how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? The people around you need to hear your words if you want to faith train today. Let's pray. Lord, we love that you have given us such a great and life-changing message. May we never hide it or be ashamed of it, but help us to speak up with joy and hope. May you use our words to bring many people to you by speaking through us the great news of Jesus Christ and his power to save. Give us boldness where there is fear and wisdom where there is confusion. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day, everyone.